Hey YouTube, it's Gina. This is going to be a crock pot freezer meal prep video. I am going to go through the steps of prepping meals that you could freeze and already have on hand for any day um, to just be able to take out your freezer and throw in the crock pot. And you probably could even throw it in the oven too if you wanted to, but I typically throw them into the crock pot in the morning before I leave from work. And when I get home, it's ready. And I'll, if I do have to, I may only have to put some sides with it, which doesn't take much time at all. So it takes a lot of time out of being in the kitchen, trying to fix dinner in the evenings and having dinners um, prepped within a certain time every evening. So I am going to start with um, cutting up some vegetables. Most of the meals I'm going to do are going to be um, chicken and beef. I'm using ground beef. For a lot of them and then um, chicken breast and chicken legs for some and I will um, start with like I said chopping up some vegetables and then we'll start putting some of these meals together it is 1109 right now and I am going to be chopping up these mushrooms I have celery cute um, zucchini and carrots and I'm going to start with chopping those items up and then I will come back and we will start to assemble some of the um, freezer meals. So I will be back. Okay guys, I'm back. I have cut up the vegetables that I'm going to use and I went ahead and put all my um, chicken already in a bag so I don't have to worry about because I'm funny about touching meat, so I'll keep washing my hands a hundred times. So I went ahead and got it out the way so I don't have to touch it. Um, so I have them in the bags, and I just I'm using the bow so it does when I put in the liquid stuff, it doesn't spill over. And a tip that I saw on another YouTube video was folding over the bag so that you don't get anything on the top of it for when you flip it over to zip it close. So I'm going to start with um, making some barbecue chicken legs. These are just um, legs that I've taken the skin off because I don't care for the skin on it. So I just took the skin off of them and I'm actually going to do two of these. And um, this is probably the easiest one that how I'm making it anyway. So that's why I'm starting with that one. I'm just going to take my barbecue sauce and I'm going to try to squeeze like half of the bottle into the bag with the chicken and that's it I will after that I will seal it up and then um, I will kind of just get the, chick the barbecue sauce covering all the chicken that's in there and then to try to get as much of the air out as you can for freezing it and spread it out and then that is ready to go into the freezer and another trick that I saw on YouTube from a different video was using an old shoe box this is just um, the bottom of a shoe box and placing your bag in there and it's like it's just a perfect fit to keep them flat for when you put them into the freezer so that they freeze flat and another thing that I've um, gotten as a tip I have done freezer meals before and I did fine with them but like um, you don't want to stack a whole bunch of them on top of each other and just stick them in the freezer to freeze because they want the the it won't circulate well enough to get everything froze perfectly the way it needs to be. So, um, and also you don't want your bags to stick together. So some people will stick um, a paper towel in between each bag that you put your ingredients in so that they don't stick when you pull them out. They don't tear up the bag underneath it. I typically will just stick it in the freezer and, um, and then let it freeze a little bit and don't I don't stack them all on top of each other right away and then once they get pretty frozen then I will stack them so that's the first one 
for the barbecue chicken. And I have another one. And like I said, I just did barbecue chicken legs. And I have probably about, I think it's about 10 chicken legs in here. And um, that's enough for my family. There's four of us. Um, I have a 19 year old daughter and a six year old daughter. And then there's my husband. So um, it's plenty for us. And then I'll just make some kind of side to go with it. And again, just kind of mush everything around so that the barbecue sauce covers all the chicken. And then again, try to get all the air out of it. And zip it closed. Spread it all out good. And then we have another one. I'm really happy I came across that method for the um, shoe box because that works out great. Now I have some chicken breast. This is probably about a pound of boneless, skinless chicken breast. And this recipe is going to be for chicken alfredo, which is another easy one. And with these recipes, I fix them how we eat. You can put what you want in these recipes. It doesn't really alter it too much. It's going to be just pretty much to how you eat. I don't particularly care for onions myself. My husband loves them. My oldest is like okay with it. And my little one, if they're small, she doesn't even notice it. So I will cook with onions, but I usually keep them pretty big so that I can pull them out because I don't like them. So, you know, if, if you're a person like me who doesn't like it, it's something that you can leave out altogether and don't have to put in the recipe at all. So I'm just going to take some a jar of um, Alfredo sauce and pour it in there. And I'm going to add, now this was a roasted garlic um, flavor um, Alfredo sauce. Typically, I just get the cheese one, but they didn't have it, so that I got that one because normally I would add garlic to it anyway, so no big thing. It's already in there. So the only thing I'm going to add is some Italian seasoning to it, and I'll put mm, a, table, a teaspoon maybe a little more than a teaspoon of um, some Italian seasoning. And me personally, like some people will add salt and pepper to it already and um, have it already in there. I don't do a lot of salt, so I prefer to wait until I'm actually eating whatever it is to see if I need salt on it. And then I add it from there. So you might see me add pepper to some of my um, freezer meals, but you won't see me add salt because, like I said, preferably I'd rather just wait until I'm eating it and then add it. And so again, I'm just going to mush it out. That's all I'm going to put in this one. And then I'll just serve this over some pasta and then we'll have chicken alfredo. And I'll probably just have some like garlic bread or something with it. But another easy meal. And I'm going to do two of those as well. And see, a lot of people are like, it takes so much time to do this kind of stuff, to prep. And it just, it really takes probably as much time as getting the stuff in bags, cutting up your vegetables. I think that probably took the majority of the time. So, uh, just going to add the jar. Of Alfredo sauce. And again, the Italian seasoning. So 
it all around. Let it get all the air out again. Now these chicken breasts that I'm using are slightly frozen, which I don't care. Um, I would have typically bought fresh chicken breasts, but these were cheaper. And that's another thing about um, doing your meal preps like this. If you do it at a time where you can find your meat on sale and a little cheaper, you're saving money. I paid... And I actually did not even separate out stuff that I buy just regularly for our house. Like I buy cookies because my husband likes them. I buy chips for the kids, um, eggs, milk, things like that I did buy this week. And I typically buy those every couple of weeks um, because we need to restock um, on those things. So in everything that I bought, including the things that were not specifically for this, I spent maybe close to $120 and I plan on getting like 14 meals out of what I bought. So that's two weeks of dinners that I won't have to worry about, you know, what we're going to have because it'll already be prepared. So our next one I'm going to do is a cilantro lime chicken and I'm actually, uh oh, sorry. knocking stuff over I'm actually going to look at my recipes for that um, one pound of chicken breast or boneless skinless chicken breast or chicken thighs I was gonna do half and half and I went to two stores yesterday and neither had boneless skinless chicken thighs because I do like um, chicken thighs um, because it's juicier but yeah, they didn't have it, so I just got boneless, skinless chicken breasts. So we're going to add to that um, about a cup of cilantro. And I'm going to use about half of what I have diced here, and it's fresh cilantro. Then it's um, about a cup of corn, and I have just frozen corn and I'm going to pour about half of this which is probably not going to be quite a cup in both of them but hey I don't really care so about I poured about half of the corn in there and then a can of black beans rinsed and I already rinsed them so I'm gonna dump that in there and I need cumin one second Forgot to pull that down. Uh, I was gonna say, of course, it wouldn't be right in the front, and I use it really like almost all the time. So one teaspoon of cumin. Yeah. See, just some ground cumin, and three tablespoons of lime juice. And I did not have um, lime juice. I had lemon juice. And I'm just going to use that. Because it's not that big of a deal. I have used lemon juice before in recipes like this. And it's just fine. And I need three of those. So there's three tablespoons. And the recipe does call for onion. I will not be adding that because, like I said, I don't like it. And in this particular dish, I don't think it's going to be a big deal to my husband either. So I'm not going to add it. And then it also calls for a teaspoon of garlic. And I'm just going to use minced garlic because this is what we use. I don't have time to be chopping up garlic cloves. So... Dump in a teaspoon of that. And I think that is it. And it is. That's all. So I'll take this one. Close it up. I'm going to mix everything around. Just 
smells really, really good. I like any dish like this. I make a lot of stuff with chicken and black beans. Um, cilantro, lime, Chipotle is probably one of my favorite places to eat at. And so this is like right up my alley. I have never made this rest this particular recipe before. I've never done it in a crock pot. So you know what? I think what I will do because I'm not going to add onion. I will add a teaspoon of onion powder. I forgot that I decided that in my mind as I was thinking about the fact that I did not want to put onion in this. So I will do that. Because I do like the flavor of onion, I just don't like the texture. I'm weird like that. So, just that around, that onion powder all around. Another thing you want to do, which I did not do beforehand, but I do have a Sharpie marker somewhere around here. So I will do that and it won't be so bad because I will use a marker. But if you, you should always write the date and what's in the bag so that you can kind of track that and you don't forget what it is. Because when it freezes sometimes, it does look different. Let me get some of this air out. It does look different. You would think you would know. And being that I've done these type of meals before, I can tell you they start to look alike. So you want to write on the front of your freezer bag what you're making and the date that you put it in there so you can kind of keep track of what's in there so like on mine out today is October 9th so I'll put October 9th and on that one I will put the cilantro lime chicken and so that I will know that's what's in there so let's we're gonna do two of those And what I kind of did is I watched a lot of YouTube videos and so we're going to put in the cilantro and I just saw like what people were doing in their meals and I took some recipes from that and I think some of the videos that helped me the most were the ones that said, you know what, don't make dishes just because they're what you see in the videos, put stuff together based on what you and your family normally eat. So Chipotle is something that we normally eat. It's not something I normally make, but it is something that we normally eat. So this reminds me of that. If I serve it with rice, basically you got a burrito bowl. Um, it's the same, same, pretty much same thing. So I just picked meals that we would typically like. Barbecue chicken, we typically eat. Um, chicken Alfredo, absolutely, we typically eat that. So I just did that to keep it easier for me um, to not make them. And then when I'm look, thinking about what I'm going to fix, I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound good because I don't know what it really tastes like. And I'm scared to really try it out on a specific day because I'm like, well, is my family going to like it? So we're going to add the black beans, the rest of the corn. And I actually have way more corn. There's no reason why I'm not putting a whole cup of corn. I'm really just being lazy because, um, as most of you know, I'm a couponer. So I have a stockpile of veggies and things like that, um, especially in the can. But that was already upstairs and I didn't feel like going downstairs. So it'll be all right. And if I want to, I can add a little more corn to it when I put it in the crock pot. That's not a big deal. So since I already have it right here. I'll do the onion powder. And this is just some powder, some generic onion powder. I think I got it at Kroger's. And we need cumin. One teaspoon. I love cumin, so I, I have plenty of that. I always put it into different things. Um and we need the lemon juice and see how easy this is like 
it's not it's as complicated really as you want to make it to me it seriously is and again close it up down. Some of that air. I actually did um, crock pot meals last week, and we had crock pot meals every day um, except for yesterday. Yesterday, I um, we had fried chicken, and I actually just fixed that. But um, I'm sorry. Um, I did them all week and the one I did on Wednesday, I did a cheesy chicken rice dish that I saw on YouTube and it actually made so much. We ate it for two days and I ended up freezing some and I'll show you that. I actually had this much. This is what you, your freezer meals will look like. Once you're done, as you can see, I have 10, eight cheesy chicken rice and I had that much left. And this was just, um, that's why I did less chicken breast this time too, because this was two chicken breasts and two chicken thighs. And then just, um, some, um, yellow rice, black beans and cheese, I think, and whatever else it called for in it, but it made a lot. So it was kind of a lesson learned. Like I did not need as much as I think I thought I did in the recipe. So I cut back this week on how much chicken I put in recipes because although we will do leftovers after one day, typically nobody wants it again. So, I mean, with that, I was able to freeze it because what I did the second day with the first day, we had just the chicken, the cheesy chicken rice. The second day, I put it in tortillas, wrapped them up, um, put them in a baking dish, covered it with enchilada sauce and cheese and baked it and made it enchiladas. So I just turned it into a different dish. And that's probably what I'll do with the leftovers when I do thaw them on a day we have them is I'll just probably do an enchilada dish with it because to me the rice just kind of changes in texture when you freeze it. So that will probably be what I do there. And so I already have one, two, four, six in that box right there. I still have one more with just chicken. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna do anything with this one because it was an extra one. So I might just leave it like it is and decide one day of what I wanna do with it. Cause I was thinking about doing a chicken and gravy meal that I saw. So that's what I think I might just save this for. And that all it is, is I will put this in the crock pot with a jar of, of gravy and that's a meal. And then I can make like some stuffing and green beans and I haven't put in the time for it. I do this while I'm at work. This cooks while I'm at work. The stuffing takes hardly any time, green beans, and we got dinner. So that's what how I look at it is it's convenient and it makes my life easier because I do cook every day. I'm one of those women who I typically cook every day. I get off work at four. I'm usually home about 4.30 and my family is eating dinner by six at the latest. And usually if they are not eating dinner at six, they're looking at me like, am I sick? Is everything okay? I am very serious. Like it's annoying sometimes because sometimes I am just tired. You know, women, we go through different things. We have times, you know, of the month and we don't feel like doing things the same and these meals actually are perfect for that because last week was that for me so not having to worry about what we were going to eat not having to worry about oh i don't feel like standing over the stove and cooking that just worked out and that just made last week great and i was like you know what i'm doing that again because it just made it easier period if there was no thought and what am i going to cook when i get home Dinner was, I picked it out the night before. You take it out the freezer the night before, stick it down in your fridge, let it just thaw in the fridge overnight in the morning, 
dump it into your crock pot. As you can see, my crock pot is still sitting out because I'm like, why am I, I'm not putting it away because I'm using it every day. I'm actually using it today and I will be recording the, a video of what I'm going to make in there today, which is one of the meals that I'm actually leaving the stuff out for it. For it. It's going to be um, with ground beef and I will post that video as well so that, to show you what I'm going to fix in there um, today because it's it's just been convenient and it's like things that I would normally slave of doing over the stove I don't have to worry about doing that so that's it for this video and I actually will have another video that will come right after this it'll be a part two to this one with me putting together my um, freezer meals that I'm going to do with the ground beef so I will see you guys later